Jeff put on a hell of a show with Summer Game Fest. There are lots of great indie titles headed our way. And Netflix is gearing up to surprise fans of games with cool looking shows. All that and the latest in everything cool today in The Rundown. Hey, welcome to The Rundown. I hope everybody is doing great out there. I am your host, Victor Lucas. This is my good friend, Jose Sanchez. He is joining us on the show today. Jose, it is wonderful to see you, my friend. How are you? I'm just channeling my inner Weezer. Right on. Yeah. Channeling the wheeze, wheezing that, the juice. Wasn't that crazy? I mean, I, I I think Weezer's been at more gaming events than I have now. They have, actually. I think, well, they're big on it. I haven't played their Wave Breaker game, but I want to check this thing out. I mean, it's, a, it's an actual been. game. That's what it they is. were there to show off, which is crazy. Uh, we are live today, although you may watch it later, but um, uh, thank you for stopping by to watch this live. Thank you to watch, if you're watching it on the archive. Uh, this is, uh, we've got KFXG in the chat, and Brian Easton, Wolverine 9966, big fan of your work, Wolverine. Oh, and Spidey82 is here, so uh, Good we, year. we have... We have X-Men versus the Avengers, I think, happening in the chat right now. Jonathan McFowl is here. Peter Kokosar just noticed that uh, we have um, Baron Zemo dancing in our uh, Thanks for Waiting video. <laughs> That's great. It's so good to see everybody. Nodding 56, hi there. Good to see you guys. All right, today's episode is dedicated to Daniel Campbell, who said, uh, yay, a real rundown again. I'll be honest, I, I adore Victor, thank you, but I really don't like watching the live streams. I love that you do them. I love that the community likes them, but they aren't for me. I like the more traditional rundowns. I totally get that. And so what I've been doing is we've been doing the live shows and then I take out the rundown chunk out of the live streams and I edit it together with some music and some footage. Um, the, the, Jose's my interpreter on the <laughs> other side there. Uh, and so it's kind of the best of both worlds, uh, but I love it if you can join us for the lives, but uh, thank you for watching any way that you do. Um, all right, today's episode is brought to us by the Gaming Stadium. They are Canada's leader in esports tournament facilitation. They've got tournaments happening every freaking weekend, and you don't want to miss out on them. You can find out all about TGS by going to tgs.gg. Okay, we have a million things to talk about today. Million and one. A million. A million and one. I know, we do. Okay, we've got the Summer Game Fest. We're going to get into the Day of the Devs. We've got the Tribeca Games Festival, um, which was the first one, and they had some games that they profiled, which was really cool. And then Netflix Geeked Week, I want to hit on that a little bit. Uh, but let's start with the biggie, and I think this is what everybody's kind of curious about, are some, some of our thoughts on Elden Ring. Um, this was shown off at Summer Game Fest. It was the big reveal. What did you think of what you saw, my friend? Um, I think it looks incredible. I believe that there was so much hype just being blasted out when the trailer was going, people just losing their minds. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, it's in my head. I'm like, dark souls with mounts that jump. Fantastic. I'm in. That's, that's great. I don't understand. I don't understand. I mean, obviously having, you know, the, the names behind the game, which is making it a little bit more hyped up than usual. Yeah. Um, but it looks like a very beautiful dark souls that allows you to ride horses that can jump very, very high. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm into that. I'm in. Do you, do I, got you... my, I got my majestic home, my unicorn horse on my shirt. I love it. I'm going to ride a mount. Can I get a uh, unicorn? That's the question. Now, do you feel that Elden Ring is, um, you know, Miyazaki's obviously had a hand in lots of these incredible experiences for people out there, but do you feel like it's a bit of an inspiration, these two, you know, brand names and creative media out there, George R.R. R., uh, um, Martin and Miyazaki working together, they're kind of pushing this to be extraordinary, or is the hype so big that it, it, they have to work extra hard to make it amazing. I feel like they would have to. I feel like, like uh, you know, we had like the Guillermo del Toro games that were announced. Everybody's like, what? Guillermo del Toro's going to be working on games? Yeah. And then it was just like, maybe. Yeah. Uh, you hope, know why? Hope, game, so. Making games is freaking hard, you know? Yeah. It's Ask the guy hard. who's trying to write the Game of Thrones books. Yes. Who can't finish those. Can't finish those. <laughs> <laughs> those were, we were supposed to get like two, three books by now. <laughs> that never happened. So luckily found the time to put some writing into a game. When you look at the visuals for this game, uh, they do look like there's another layer of, um, uh, you know, lore oh, 
and well, yeah, like there's a there, there's some crafting going on in all of the corners that feels a little bit different from what we've seen in the Dark Souls games. And uh, but you know, From has been so extraordinarily creative in a bunch of different directions. It doesn't look like they wouldn't do this themselves. Yeah. Right. Like they would find it within their own creative ranks to be able to pull some of these thoughts and ideas together here. I love this <laughs> multi-handed enemy that you have to battle. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just crazy. I, th- I mean, it just looks so great. But what about it doesn't look like if it was called Dark Souls 4? Yeah. Yes. People would have been like, still looks amazing without the names attached. People would have yeah. been like, this is Dark Souls 4. Everybody would have been like, yes, this is going to be great. <laughs> I can't wait. Uh, so, I mean, it's again, the hype for it is just astronomically amazing, at least from what I saw on the Internet. Yep. Uh, I'm definitely looking forward to playing it. I just hope that the people who are that hyped for it embellish that hype and in- enjoy that experience when it finally comes out. And yeah. it's not just throw away Dark Souls game. Yeah, or throw away George R. R. Martin storytelling. Yeah. You know, like it has to be uh, fantastic work from him, you know, not sort of like I partitioned 20% of my life because yeah. of the contract and I did Don't this. phone it in, George. Yeah, totally. Okay? It's got to be. Because people will hate. Like people hate on yeah. the people yes. hate pe- there's professional haters yeah. that are all about hating on this guy and what happened on his TV show about yeah. his book series that everybody loves so much. If you mess up a game, yeah. it's a lot more expensive than a book. Well, I'll tell you this though. I mean, this is the uh we we saw a lot of video game images, a lot of images, period, you know, flash across our uh our screens over the last few days. This is absolutely the most incredible imagery that I saw. You know, this is like stop traffic uh, kind of storytelling in a trailer right here. This looks incredible. Yeah, no, I mean, again, it it should though. Yes, right. You know what You're I mean? Right. Yeah, it should. Because mm-hmm. if it looked like trash, it'd be like, what? What? What have you what been doing? What, what just happened? Yeah. What is it? This yeah. is a piece. No. Yeah, the, no, there's the stake, no doubt. The stakes are high. The pressure is high, right? They cannot <laughs> yeah. screw this up. It's like Halo Infinite. They cannot screw Elden Gr- Elden I mean, Ring it, up. Yeah, it closed out the Summer Games Fest for a reason. Oh, did did you see how hyped Keeley was? He was. It was it, 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 I thought it, he was it, going to yeah. explode. I don't know if I've ever seen him that it's animated. Go time, man. Yeah. yeah, he was ready. I mean, I would be too because he's like, I know a lot of people have been hyped. Yeah, he's got his finger on the pulse of the you know the gaming culture. He's like, I know there's so many people who are about to lose their damn minds. I loved, I loved that energy though. It was really yeah. cool. Okay, well, I put uh, you know a list together in no particular order. So we're going from this super massive experience of Elden Ring to something that looks a, a little bit more approachable and accessible, a little bit more familiar. This is Endless Dungeon, uh, which is. Kind Kind of a top-down dungeon crawler with all kinds of uh, cool-looking enemies and stuff. A little uh, anime-flavored, sci-fi anime-flavored. Uh, what did you think of uh, what you saw of Endless Dungeon? I mean, I feel like there's a lot of that going yeah. around, like that that anime-ish influence. Mm-hmm. You know, like that yep. that I don't, it's not like like kind of Breath of the Wild-ishness sure. to yes. games. Yes. I feel like we saw a lot of that. Yeah. I feel like we saw a lot of that, not just in the Day of the Dev stuff and the the Summer Games Fest, but I feel like I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I just I, I like where I like what's happening. <laughs> People are like they don't have to make the most polished looking experiences. They can sort of like dial it back and make it look anime and cartoony, and it just looks so crazy though. It kind of has like a, oh what's that game? Not Among Us, um, the game where you're like killing people. Uh, that's every game. Different. It is the game, you know, where you, you kill people and you're in the thing. Yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah. No, it's like a cell shaded Diablo, you know? Like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I so hope, I, I don't know how it plays. That's the weird thing about the yeah. C3. We cannot walk up to stations and, and feel these games. Remember so, those days? Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, uh, I hope it's a dual stick shooter type of experience because it's got a little bit of a Smash oh, TV kind of vibe, yeah. a little like fusion loaded of, on the PlayStation. Yes. Oh, dude. Yeah. Take me back. I'm ready totally. for it loaded. Let's get, let's get loaded. Yeah, totally. But, uh, uh, it, you know, obviously using all the modern tech and all the, the, the sort of sizzle and flash that they can put into this thing. It looks like fun, and it's another co-op shooter. There's quite a bit of co-op stuff. And uh, speaking of which, player. we're going to talk about Evil Dead right now. Were you a fan mm-hmm. of uh, what you saw and Bruce Campbell doing the uh, the narration for, for a game I mean, that's obviously on. very important to him? It's Bruce Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> they they could have called it Evil Left 4 Dead, and I would have been like, let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's go back for blood. It <laughs> sure Left does for look Dead. like Left 4 Dead, doesn't it? <laughs> right. Yes. It's like, okay, I don't mind it because it's it's but it has also that uh that Friday the thirteenth element. 
Yes. That look, that feel to it, like, uh, like okay, is Jason Voorhees going to pop out? Yeah. <laughs> is, is one random character going to get to play Bruce Campbell each time? Like, there's going to be random characters thrown out. So, uh, I mean, I doubt that, but it could be. Could That could be the thing. Yeah, I mean, okay. that was the thing about the the original movie. It, it's as much a comedy as it was a, a horror film and a, and a yeah. kind of a stylish take on it. And so they have to employ a lot of the over-the-top violence and insanity in this as well. Um, I, I'm just, you know, it, it, we have two other games that are kind of like this to talk about just in the Summer Games Fest kind of reveals, which is a little bit weird. In fact, why don't we just move on to the next one, which is Back for Blood, which had just a little bit of a teaser. Um, The open beta hits August 5th, and they wanted to show off some new zombie creatures and stuff in here. This is, um, it's Turtle Rock, the developers of Left 4 Dead, the original one, the creators. Um, And it it just looks like Left 4 Dead. I know that there's some enhancements and embellishments to you know and improvements because of the tech and everything, but it just looks like it's a sequel to what we've seen before. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, we we're getting a lot of sequels. We haven't seen Left 4 Dead in a while. I know it's been long enough to where yeah. it's not like we just had Left 4 Dead like two years ago. Nope, we didn't. It's been quite a long time. It's been a console cycle. Well, I I posted on Twitter. I asked people. Me too. I post every day. You, did you? You yeah. use you use that website? <laughs> I do. Uh, I posted on Twitter. Let's see if I can find this thing right now. It's on my Netscape I should, account. I should have I should have I had this ready to go. Um, I asked people what they're more excited about, whether it's uh, Evil Dead or Back for Blood, and mm. um, got those results. But bear results with are me in. as I, as I they find are them. <laughs> unequivocally. We have. <laughs> The most anticipated poll results oh, on the on You history. know what I did is I tweeted again, so I have a whole bunch of comments. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Based on the next thing that I tweeted. Okay, here it is. So the poll results are, uh, and I didn't put a graphic up or anything like that, but I'll just tell you, 53% for Back for Blood, 47% for um, Evil Dead. And I think what it is is that Turtle Rock connection, yeah. right? People are feeling... Yeah, they, they feel like they're in trusted hands with Turtle Rock, and they feel like if they plunk the money down, they're going to get something. Of course, um, you know, they've got some catching up to do. What was their their monster asynchronous game? What was that one called? I forget it, the Evolve? name. Evolve? Yeah, oh, Evolve, one. where they, they kind of let their community down a little bit towards the end of that. So uh, Blair Farrell is saying Evil Dead for me just because of the IP. Um, yeah. yeah, you guys can go ahead and tell me. We can do a live poll right here. Um, Turtle Rock also made Evolve. We'll have the results at the end of the stream. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll try to go up all of the comments and see if I can read those in real time. Uh, Okay, well, you know, they both look cool. It's going to be very interesting to see the horse race between uh, Back for Blood and Evil Dead and how that all plays out because you've got the established IP with Mm -hmm. Bruce Campbell and you have this uh, lineage with Back for Blood. But there's also this other one, which is kind of a sci-fi take on it. It's called the Anacrusis. And um, oh, yeah. it, this has got a bit of an uh, animation kind of vibe to it, a little sense of humor. This one doesn't look as sophisticated. It looks like it could be a lot of fun. Like but a it Team looks Fortress. Like... It's like a Team Fortress-esque-ness about yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. It, but also it looks, you know, not as detailed. There's, It looks yeah. like there's a lot of repeating models and stuff like that with the enemy types. It doesn't look bad. It just looks uh, um, less flashy. Less it, for dead. <laughs> Less for dead, yeah. Less for dead. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think this one, and I would recommend to the developers, I don't think it's coming out this year. Um, but that was a pretty crowded showcase of uh, cooperative multiplayer shooters like that, where you're all kind of leaning on each other for assistance. Teamwork, man. They're, teamwork. You know, makes the like, dream work. People like playing. It does make the dream work. People like yeah. playing together. They're trying to get that energy back. Remember when you used to just get groups of people together and play a game? I am ready for it. I played something with Bear the other night, the other day on the rundown. We played um, uh, Operation Tango. It was great. A cool. I know we were supposed to play co-op. Knockout City, and then you left me hanging. I'm sorry, bro. I, you okay. know what it was? I couldn't. I still couldn't figure it out with Blair. I couldn't get the two vid windows up. And the I, anyways, it was a nightmare. But we we did we were we did manage to play it. Maybe next week you and I will play some Knockout City because that, that game is super fun. I don't know. Um, all right, let's talk about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Um, oh yeah, we're going back to the Borderlands universe. Yeah, but a different vantage point, different kind of style, a little bit more fantasy infused. It's interesting, right? Like, you know, uh, they tried something different. Gearbox did with Battleborn, going yeah. in a different direction. Um, but now they're sort of diving into their lore and expanding the lore, which kind of makes sense. They, the, sure. the, um, uh, 
uh, the the Borderlands franchise is so huge, and they've got the movie coming up, and yeah. clearly, like they handled, hired uh, Wanda Sykes and Andy Samberg. Um, Will Arnett, yeah, yeah, and I love Will Arnett; it's awesome. Yeah. So hopefully, this game feels different, though, right? We don't really get a sense of what it is yet, other than there's there's going to be a, a it's unicorn. It's got butt stallions, Vic. Come on, butt it's stallions got are in there. Unicorns. <laughs> Come on, Vic. And, and Tiny Tina's pretty rad. Let's go, man. And she's going to be a character in the Borderlands film, which is pretty crazy. So, yeah, I think it was the right choice. I just hope that it's an awesome game. Because I have to be honest, like, Borderlands 3 was a good game, but I I don't know how much you played of it. It just didn't feel like it elevated much off of what I had already experienced on the previous Borderlands games. Yeah, it's just more of the same. Yeah. So I feel like, new again, but, you know... We're in that new console generation. You got to give me that new console punch. Totally. Get get people excited to be upset that they still can't get a hold of these consoles. And, just, you know, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Ho- ho- hopefully and it, everybody and it isn't so much just the graphics either, right? Because almost every game that comes out these days can look really, really great. It's It's got to be a freshness in the approach of the design. You know, it's got to yeah. feel it doesn't have tangibly to look, different. Yeah, it doesn't have to look the most insane craziness just give me that gameplay experience with that i want to tell people about and yeah this game doesn't look as good as it should but yes it's so much fun to play totally yeah it's got to take some huge risks like uh you know ghosts of tsushima who would expected that out of sucker punch right (laughs) dude right something that's so authentic they get they get uh uh, you know, uh, um, awarded by the ci- the city of Tsushima for right? <laughs> helping to put their game is so cool. The city of Tsushima goes, thank you. You guys are awesome. Everybody knows about us. That I mean, that's what we want to see out of games. It's not so much like make it the most beautiful thing we've ever seen. It's just like elevate it. Well, you that's know? not fair because that game looks amazing. It does. Yes, it does. Yes, it oh, does. Oh, man. No, I, it just sucks for the tourism for Tsushima. Nobody can really go visit because, right you now, know, yeah. you can't really go and visit. Yes. I, well, next time I go to Japan, first stop, I'm taking a little trip Maybe, over to Tsushima and s- get an onsen. Something tells me it will be a... Uh, have you been there? No, you, not to Tsushima. No. I, but I want to be a ghost there. Maybe we should go there one day. That would we be We should go and review the game again. Maybe. Well, the <laughs> sequel is what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm ghost sure of Tushima. Yeah, back to Tushima. I love it. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, Loot River. Did you see this game? Actually, this was supposed to be Loot in the River? day of the day of the devs. I have this in the wrong category. We'll talk about Loot yeah. River in a second here. Okay. Loot. This Dark Alliance game. Um, I know it's imminent, but they had a little tiny showcase. They were oh, playing yeah. it a bit in uh um Hannibal Buress was playing this game and one Hannibal of the wrestlers Barrett. he's like this is incredible yeah I mean it, it is it looks so addictive like I I'm really compelled by this game I hope it's great I really do it's coming out so soon but it was nice that it had a, a little profile in here even though you know we're we're looking into the distance with a lot of these titles it's cool that we have stuff that's imminent to look forward to as well yeah, that's I mean a lot of the stuff we're looking at it's coming in coming on down the road yes Oh man, I just missed the time when we could go and see this stuff and that just the energy of the crowd, you know? It's yeah. like it's so funny because you get Keely so pumped and he's yes. announcing things at the game fest and there's it's just no one silence. in the crowd to yeah. it's like here it is. <laughs> Crickets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some audio cheering back oh, there. Oh, man, every, every talk show host. I mean, I'm hosting the show out of my basement, man. It's all like that everywhere. <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about Vampire Masquerade Blood Hunt. Did you uh, expect this one? I think it's been in development for a while, and well, I don't know if it's they've, a fr- they've free-to-play They've had some deal. issues. Yeah. Well, like this, this is, is... This isn't Vampire Masquerade 2. This Blood is a two? separate game. Uh, that's a battle royale in the Vampire Masquerade universe. Oh, but right. I don't know if it's free to play. I don't know really anything about it. This wasn't really a game. It's en- in-engine work. This is what the game is apparently going to look like, which is great. But we don't really know how you play it. Looks yeah. cool, though. <laughs> right? I mean, it looks great. Yeah. No idea what it is. It's actually, <laughs> uh, it's actually a puzzle game. It's a match three puzzle game. Well, I don't think it is. What? I think no. it's it's like Fortnite with vampires, kind of um, you know riffing on on uh, stuff we would see in a Blade movie or something. I'm yeah. all about that. I oh, think yeah. that sounds super cool. I'm ready for the return of Blade. Yeah, me too. It's coming coming back strong. Martial yes. 
I, I just, I hope it isn't, uh, yeah, it looks like it's a microtransaction fest where you're customizing everything. I mean, there's so yeah. many of those titles, you know? Like, how do, how you, do you, how, how do you stand out? How do you stand out? And then how do you, as a player, really, you know, feel any sense of ownership to these things that are so, uh, you know, amorphous and they could disappear at any moment unless they're super popular, you know? Yeah. But Throw a different skin on it, call it a different game. But then, you know, there's lots of, um, uh, you know, r responses to that. There's lots of games that have been around for a long ass time now and lots of happy players in those spaces. Um, I, I, you know, I think this game is going up against some really heavy competition in this space. It yeah. doesn't look like Call of Duty Warzone, but I think that could be <laughs> in its favor, right? That could be one of the, the things that makes it attractive yeah. to a lot of people. Do every game has their branch of haters that will play the, an the anti version of that game. Right. They're like, oh, this is going to do this. I'm going to give it a whirl and see if it does it better so I can it's talk true. more trash about this game that is great, but I hate it. Yeah. And got to give the fun. haters something, you know? Yeah, yeah. You got to deliver something for the haters. Too. <laughs> uh, okay. We had a, a little tease for um, Tales of Arise. When I this fight, is the, uh, the I next fight in the Tales my franchise. Dream. I've played a bunch well, of these over the this years. This crew just gets bigger and bigger. Detailed. Cooking is always an element in these uh, the RPGs. Uh, Seems the rumors you were running with them were so true. Really good. It looks like they're going to have money. Get toasty! Burn strike! Like Genshin Impact in some ways. But does Genshin Impact look like a previous Tales game? Looking for yes, it you. does. Genshin There's been a lot of Tales games. <laughs> yes. All of them. Get the hell out of my like realm! A lot of other this is Tannen's realm and it's ours, understand? Cool, man. Like, cool combat sequences. Uh, interesting characters. It was a pretty elaborate uh, trailer. Oh, this is trying to show a ton of stuff over? in this thing. Um, oops, it's and it's the audio is super loud. Um, audio on the trailer. Thank you. It's <laughs> uh, that Tails audio. <laughs> I can't hear it. the Atmos. <laughs> yeah, I can't hear it. All right, so what did you think of the Tales of Arise trailer? I mean, I always love a good Tales game. I don't think I've, I think I just started playing. Uh, well, I didn't just start playing, but the, they did a remaster. Yeah, the tales of one of the tales games I was yeah. playing that was on Game Pass, and so I played that for a good chunk of hours, and I was like, okay, okay, there's gonna be some new tales coming out soon. Maybe I'll save my tales time for that. I uh, but I mean, all these tales games have always looked good. I've always there's always things that I sort of play on the back end. I'm like, I'll get around to it, and then I play it, and I'm like, I actually really enjoyed that experience. Yeah, yeah. They, they the tales games that I played over the years have uh, impressed me with their depth and their different kinds of uh, gameplay varieties that they have in there. I can remember cooking up dishes and things like that. I can remember pissing off Tommy talking about that stuff actually back in the day. We all know uh, how much but, he loves cooking. But clearly, there's some real money spent on this game, and it looks uh, like it's trying to compete with the best of the stuff that's out there in the in the JRPG uh, stuff out there, and which is good yeah. to see from Bandai. They're not just throwing money at Elden Ring at Bandai Namco; they're throwing some money at this as well, <laughs> which is good to see. Well, I feel like if it's the same crew that's been working on these Tales games for the same amount of years that Tales games have been out, mm -hmm. they should be damn good at it. And they're not letting any punches; hold, they're not holding any punches back. Yeah, yeah. So they've clearly taken that next gen technology and are putting it to use. Um, we have a, a, a different uh, kind of role-playing experience. Again, sort of cooperative base, but you can play it solo. This one looked cool to me, and it's playing on our fascination, which seems incredibly topical, with Vikings. It's called uh, t uh, Tribes of Midgard, and you're going to be fighting fire giants and uh, you know, outfitting your Vikings with all kinds of different outfits and weapons and things like that, going into battles as a group or individually. Uh, top down, a little bit like um, uh, the endless dungeon kind of aesthetic, but and, and yeah. also got has a little bit of an anime animated movie kind of sheen to it. But it looks that, cool, man. Yeah, it looks super that anime accessible. Diablo look. It's yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> little Diablo for sure. Uh, you know, I mean, it's, I guess I any mean, top down sort of extravaganza experience like this is going to be considered a little bit Diablo esque. But I mean. I, yeah, who doesn't love Vikings? I love me a good Vikings. Me too. Sport. Yeah, it looks chaotic and it looks uh, Vikal Viking alicious. Viking alicious. Viking alicious. Trademark that. Get a yeah, shirt. I, I hope it's good. I hope it's good. Um, and then I hope was, a lot of these games are good, Vic. I know. Who, I know. Who, who watches a release like I hate this game? This game is just, this game is <laughs> oh, gonna be. I done. didn't include everything, and it's not because I hate the games. I just know that it's not something I'm excited about, and I, I, I predicted that you wouldn't be. 
Um, and I'm not trying to throw any shade because games are for everybody, but I didn't include everything. Uh, let's That's move it. on to Salt and Sacrifice. Um, it was there was uh, Salt and Sanctuary, Sanctuary, yeah, which I own, but I have never played. And uh, now that I've seen this trailer, I really want to dive into the first game. And this looks cool, doesn't this look like the the recent? Uh, was it Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblin, Ghouls and Goblins? Yeah, yeah uh, right. Yeah. Ghosts and goblins, ghouls and ghosts. I can never remember which one which it is. One's which one's yeah. which? Yeah. What's the breakdown of that? Like, how, how does that work? Uh, no, I, I'm again. I didn't play Salt and Sanctuary, but I know some some of my buddies who streamed it. And I sat back and watched them play it, and I was like, okay, this is a. It's like Darkest Dungeon esque kind of, but not yeah. quite. Yeah. But it has that sort of similar aesthetic look to it. But it this new one looks like. The looks traversal's amazing. out of control, yeah. Yeah, it looks incredibly ambitious. I love that you're hunting mages. This is a really dramatic trailer for something that looks like it was designed with puppet craft or something like that, you know? Like, uh, clearly done with, yeah. uh, like, Paper flash mache. animation tools yeah. or something. Yeah, but it, it it does, they do look like pupper, pup, puppet models, like paper puppet models or something. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm psyched for this one. That one looks awesome to me. I like the, the new, the newish looking... Uh, experiences that we saw mm -hmm. over the last couple of days. Cause I mean, you talk about this game. There was another game that was in the day of the devs the day of the devs that yeah. stop motion game. Yeah. We're going to get into that right now. And actually that that's a great segue because what I think what has become apparent over this uh, opening salvo for E3 is how important and integral the ingenuity of indie developers really is. You know, yeah. like we, we really need their creativity in the industry right now. There's, they're sort of replacing that double A spectrum out there, and they're coming up with lots of great ideas. I had Loot River up before a, a little early, but we didn't really talk about this. This is an interesting game. They, they wanted to combine Tetris and Diablo, and the whole idea is you can go onto these rafts and maneuver the rafts around and then get into your battles and do all your looting, or you can avoid the battles by the way that you... Um, maneuver the environment a little bit. It reminded me a bit of Cardo, which I don't know if you've played any of Cardo. It's on uh, yeah. Game Pass, and I love that game. It's really, really lovely. Uh, love but this has pass. a cool aesthetic, and and uh, <laughs> you're just trapped on an island, terrified of monsters waiting to kill you. Yeah, sounds great. It, yeah, yeah. Sounds not like a good day for the character, <laughs> but a good day for the player, right? You wouldn't want to live it. Great to visit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it looks like you're going to be able to get in all kinds of cool combat situations and then interact with townspeople and level up and explore. And then uh, you get the Tetris ability of being able to maneuver objects around and, and slide stuff around willy-nilly like that. Just why not? Throw that and into the beautiful throw that into water the effects, too, in this. Did you notice that? Yeah. For a water's, game. water's been looking so good lately. Yeah. Water's it's it's been almost looking like the outside. It's like we don't need to leave. Yeah. Remember when you used to go outside and see water? It's been, it's a... <laughs> Screw that. Who wants yeah. to do that? I, I can just see it <laughs> in breathtaking 4K high definition. <laughs> we we actually do have two stop motion video games to talk about. One of them was in the uh, Day of the Devs, and one of yeah. them had a nice uh, reveal in... Well, They've both been around forever because the thing about stop motion is they <laughs> they take years and uh, <laughs> you, you can trace back like development history and Kickstarter accounts and stuff like that. Let's talk about uh, Vocabulantis first, yes. which was in Day of the Devs. Uh, what'd you think of this? Man, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, like just the amount of work and like the, I think it's one person. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, if it that's which is in madness in itself, mm. but just the amount of time it would take just to process the oh, we can do this. Like, yeah, they don't people were freaking out because they didn't have like mouths. The characters didn't have mouths on them. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't, I don't need to see him talk. Imagine having to do that. Yeah. But like make him. Oh, man, that's just a whole other level of. But just the detail, like photogrammetry stuff that they use, which I first heard about when like one of the Battlefront games was using it. And just like, we got all these things that are going to make, make these things look so realistic and crazy in real life photos. And and then to see it just like, oh, we're going to do the entire game like that. What? It, it's <laughs> incredible. Yeah, it it's looks so good. It looks like one of these games that I hope people play. Yeah. Because yeah, it reminds me a bit of like you know, the early Prince of Persia stuff and out of this world, you, you know, when they, yeah. Yeah. And flashback. And, and, uh, uh, there was another game that I remember just being so hyped up at E3 and it was it just really cool. This rotoscoped animation, you know, this really methodical, Karanika. yeah, <laughs> met, 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 uh, you know, meticulous kind of design ideas. And, uh, and this guy, 
I think it's just Solo, the solo developer. It's just been working for years, taking multiple photos of his characters and then digitizing them into a video game so it's manipulable in three three dimensions or two dimensions at least. Yeah. And well, and just God. doing the thing where like it takes the photo of it all the way around with a different lighting so you yeah. don't have to like go through and animate it and oh just I don't know. I'm so stoked. Like that was one of the things I saw a day of the devs. And I was like, okay, this yeah. is the, the top of my list of things that I most definitely have to play. Well, I don't, I don't know if you saw Harold Halibut, but that is the other one. And this one's been uh, in development for a long time by a little team. And this was part of team, uh, Tribeca's game. first games festival, uh, part of the showcase. And they were taking a look at a, a bunch of different titles out there. It's made by slow bros. <laughs> <laughs> Slow bros. <laughs> Which is such a great name for a, a yeah. team. And so uh, this one, again, super story-based, uh, platformy type action. And um, uh, you've got, you know, everything is meticulously crafted and handcrafted and hand-built and hand-designed. In the Tribeca showcase, they had interviews and they showed a little bit about how this has come together. Um, and it's just absolutely fascinating, you know. It's got a sci-fi kind of thing to it, a little Brazil. There's a sense of humor about it, interesting-looking characters, and lots of detail in the faces. It looks like a Wes Anderson movie. Have you seen Isle of Dogs? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's got that kind of Isle of Dogs kind of vibe. Like, you I was like, I believe- thought you meant a game. I was like, wait, it was an Isle of Dogs game? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, know? this this looks like it looks like Isle of Dogs, or it looks like you know somebody got their GI Joes and and uh, like and made a movie. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah, or yeah. Fantastic Mr. Fox. Just insane. Like this is just so clearly so much work and effort. Add it to the list, Vic. Let's yeah. go. You know that that's why I like when games like you know like Limbo. You know, like uh, it's just they come out, you're just braid. You're just like, wait, what is this? Yeah. It, they don't yeah. have to look crazy over the top, but such great and unique experiences that I hope the story that goes along with these games packs as much punch as the visuals do when you first see them. Yeah, I mean, it's it's clearly both of those titles. I, I have high hopes for both. And, and uh, I really hope uh, they come together in a way that satisfies the game makers, you know, like they're fit, they release them, they're finished and people enjoy them and then they get their reward. It may not be a monetary reward, but I hope that, I hope that it is. Take my money. Yeah. Take my, who's that mean? Take my money. But I, I hope, you know, creatively that whole effort feels justified, you know, cause it's, yeah. it's layers on layers of work. Like most indie games, I think, you know, people might crack on them for a couple of years maybe three years, um, you know, as they're kind of testing yeah. ideas and systems. This out, guy's but... been taking pictures of vocabulantis since 2001. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes that's how long it takes. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's insane. Uh, but let's go back into the, uh, in the day of the devs lineup there. You mentioned uh, Limbo and um, the, the folks at Thunderful Publishing, and I think it's Wishful is the game maker, two great brands. <laughs> Um, have Thunderful. something that feels very Limbo-esque. It's uh, beautiful and sort of very painterly, almost like it's, uh, it's done with watercolors or something at the beginning. And then you see the approaching dune of rockets falling to the earth, and, it, and there's this ominous kind of vibe to this. It's really cool, right? Yeah. Planet of Lana. Yeah, Planet of Lana is the name of this. And yeah, it's, you know, again, it's more of a artistic ambitious uh, ideas, wishfully is the name of the company. But it definitely company. evokes a little limbo here, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, again, it's it's those companies that take those risks that aren't trying to be super crazy realistic and that are doing stop motion, doing watercolors, doing yeah. like that yeah. Ori in the Blind Forestness of just like, yes. How visually appealing this is hand painted what? Like, are you <sighs> kidding? Okay. Uh, That's what I was talking about. I was like, ah, man, people are like, where everybody's so hyped for the game, but like, let's let's see about or just for E3 in general. Like, I want a new Metroid. I want a new something. I was like, just give me a good old fashioned two D side scrolling game. That's just a plethora of a fun and excitement, like a Shadow Complex. Just take those risks, and I'm like, Planet of Lana. Okay, another game. I love me some water. I love beauty. I just I like my eyes like pretty things. Yeah. But it comes down to at the end of the day, no matter if it's the highest quality 4K Ultra 8K like lens flare and whatever. Or if it's just like simple paintings on the backgrounds and just, oh, yeah, also impending doom. Yeah. Let's go, Lana. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's save the world. 
Yeah, it can be uh, it can be three D and completely ambitious. It can look you know almost photo real, like some of the stuff that we see in Last of Us Part Two, or it can be two dimensional with pixels or two dimensionals with uh, hand painted backgrounds, like Planet yeah. of Lana. And yeah, stunning, just absolutely stunning. I totally agree with you. Thanks for the heads up on the uh, on the audio, you guys. Um, and then there was uh, um, Axiom. Speaking of people working their butts off, Axiom Verge Two uh, yes, from dude. Thomas Hap. Uh, uh, the first game is insane. It's just it's such so a beautiful good. work of art, isn't it? Yeah, so good. Yes, I'm, I was like, yes, the uh, AV2, let's uh, go. I'm so impressed by uh, by Thomas Happ, you know, like just the, um, like he's really let people into his world. I don't know if you watched the documentary that was on IGN about uh, the making of the first game, but he really kind of digs into his family and, and um, he's got some stuff that he's dealing with. I totally recommend everybody watch that, that documentary. But in the midst of all of that, uh, he is just making these incredible creative works, you know. And we haven't got this game. We've got a while, a while, a while to wait, and it's going to be hitting the PlayStation and PS5, which was announced. PlayStation Four and PS5, which was announced at Summer Game Fest. But and and the other thing that was interesting about this too is that it, it's not about a uh, projectile kind of uh, experience. It's much more of a melee, up close and personal kind of deal. Even yeah. though you get shot at. Um, but it it looks like it's going to play with a lot of those surreal themes of the, of the first game. Yeah. Oh God. I was hoping they would announce it just for the Vita. Just, just (laughs) it's also coming out on the Vita. Yes. Vita fans unite. We got another one. Did it hit the, the 3DS? I know it was on the Wii U. Was it also on the 3DS? The first one? I I don't know. Yeah. I I mean, it was on the Vita. It's been like Axiom Verge has been around for a long time. It's an excellent fit on the switch. Though. Yeah, I mean, that t- I'm telling you, man, that 2D side scrolling stuff. Yeah, it's another game that doesn't have to be super crazy photorealistic, but just give you that awesome gameplay like that. Did you play the the Mummy game that came out a few years ago, The Mummy Demastered? No. Oh, dude. Based on the it, movies? Yes. But oh, wow, cool. It's, it was based, uh, kind of loosely based on the newest movie. Yeah. But such a good game. Oh wow, I got to check just that the, out. Just another the 2D pixel. Side, it's like a Metroidvania. Oh, wow. 2D side scroll. Dude, it was great. The soundtrack, cool. fantastic. Oh, Highly I got to check that out. That's very so cool. That's okay, right. so I mean, not only cool. in this episode of The Rundown are we looking into the future, we're also looking digging the, into the past. Because yeah. who's going to like The Mummy? Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> and uh, you would think it was going to get some crazy, because the last Mummy game I think that came out on the Wii was garbage. Yes. But, uh, but this one, couldn't recommend more if you're in a 2D side I think they should make, you know, we're totally on a tangent here, but I think they should make a new Mummy movie and bring back Brendan Fraser, and maybe as the mummy because he's maybe I mean he's an older <laughs> guy, but but bring him in somehow, you know, make him part of the family somehow on, on his road to redemption there, um, and, or on his road to a comeback. He's in Doom Patrol, and apparently he's doing pretty well with that. Uh, but there was another game that was uh, very beautiful and very unique. It was called Toem. And uh, this one's a fo- a, a photography adventure game, yeah, which is kind of a clever take and something that we just saw with Pokemon Snap um, back again. Uh, but there's like a, a, a you know like stripped of color, and yeah. it's all about framing and solving little mysteries and puzzles with your camera. Looks I thought cool. like I was as I was watching uh, I was watching yesterday when you were talking about it, and I was like, oh, I thought like you know if you do something interesting, it's going to turn the world into a little color give a little splash like you take the right photo or you do something creative and it's just like pop and then it kind of does something with color doesn't have to but i was Mm -hmm. i was i was hoping something like that would happen me too uh but i'm i'm interested in see how it's gonna play out like is it they might do that and they don't want to reveal that i think right they might be trying to keep that as a surprise but it looks cool you know i like the character design it it looks like a a kid's uh storybook or something like that um, it looks very special. Looks very special. Um, let's talk about this Phantom Abyss. This is the uh, Indiana Jones game that I didn't know I and the Spelunky game that I didn't know I wanted like crazy. But now I really freaking do. This is Devolver bringing this thing out. Every tomb is different, mm-hmm. and if you die, that's it. So that's if you don't it. get you, you got to get in there. It's like the prelude, the opening sequence of Raiders of the Lost Ark. You got to go and get the. The the uh, the you know ancient item the relic yeah. and get out of the tomb before all the traps get you and you've got a whip are you kidding me yeah and this then looks there's freaking like the awesome of, the the ghosts of other players yeah like what is happening is this like speed running am I do I have to get there first are we all in a race together 
I think it's a little bit of that, and it's a little bit of um, you know, sort of solving the the puzzles of the traps and stuff, yeah. and not getting it's sandwiched. Like, it's like Mirror's Edge esque, yeah. But I'm hunting for treasure with a whip. With a whip. Give me a break. <laughs> yeah. It looks so good. And a fedora. <laughs> well, you you can customize your character, but I'm sure there are you know what it's going to be is going to be 99 percent Indiana Fedoras. Jones. 100%. characters or, or Lara Crofts <laughs> and and 1% Lara Crofts out there yeah, <laughs> One yeah this lo- this looks like crazy fun it it looks like you know Lucasfilm has had the rights to do this kind of thing for a million years and they just haven't done it and Indiana Jones has influenced so many different you know developer you know so many people in the industry and uh, there have been lots of tangents uh, that have borrowed from indie liberally Mm-hmm. This one looks like one of those games that does it. Uh, even Spelunky does a little bit, right? I mean, come on, look at him. Yeah, look at him. He's got yes. his fedora. On. It's the yeah, Spelunks. I mean, Lucas could have been making these games all the way along. They 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 have wanted to make the big epic indie games, and then they've been squashed by how expensive and ambitious they are. But there's lots of ways to appreciate. You, you know, that kind of storytelling and that kind of myth building that they did with indie. And this is a perfect example, even though it's not a licensed indie game. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be humming. It's got a fedora and a whip in it. Dun, yeah. dun, 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 yeah. As I'm racing yeah. <laughs> Can't wait, man. <laughs> this one's going to be an early access. It might even be an early access right now on Steam. Uh, but it will be very it was soon. Yesterday, maybe. Yesterday, yeah. I want. I want to say it was. I think this was the game that said you can try the early access now. It's available. Very cool. Well, it looks great. Can't wait to play the Phantom Abyss, and I definitely will. The Wandering Village is another one that uh, was shown off yesterday, and this is a very interesting idea. It's it's part role playing experience. It's part city building, um, and, and then you're as you saw, you're on the back of this giant lumbering creature, and again. Uh, you know, not state of the art in fidelity, but a really beautiful look to this one, isn't it? Yeah, it's like heavy on the black inks. Yeah, you know, like the character yeah. outlines are all just very like dark and rich, and it's. I mean, I'm not much of a city builder. Mm-hmm. Not afraid to admit it. Um, so I, I can't say I'm gonna. I can't wait for this game to come out. I'm excited to check it out. <laughs> I would be a lie, and I would not lie to you. Uh, yeah, that's that's like it me looks with interesting. The, that's like me with um, uh, point and click adventures. You know, I appreciate them. I point. dig them, but I, I they're just not for me. You know, you play I, Thimbleweed Park. Come on, mate. I I didn't really, and I felt terrible that I didn't because it looked amazing. I know. Um, I, I, I think te- you know I te- somebody. I, I like Grim know- Fandango. I like Grim Fandango. What about That's uh, Indiana Jones? One. He had some great point and click adventures. Vid. I have them. I I just you I haven't played them. No, I, Admit I, it. You know what it is? Say it on the stream. I haven't really played them, but the, you know what God. it is? It's because you have to Damn get into it. the. And I said this to Tim Schaefer once when I was interviewing him. It's like I don't know what you're thinking when you're concocting these puzzles. <laughs> I'm not in that headspace of like you need this thimble. And then you need this cactus, and you need to get a watering can, and you need to turn left, and then point your gun, and then the paper will come out of the safe. It's like, what? How do yeah. you know that? How Vic, do you, man? You should do a stream where you go back <laughs> and play some point and click indie. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Yes, I should. I'm just I, I, I mean, I want to play them. I do appreciate them. I just I, with the fedora I, on. You got to wear the. You play the part. I'll tell you a little story. Well, we have time, right? Sure we're live. I'm, I'm not doing. Okay, it. I'm uh, stuck we, inside. <laughs> the first computer I had was the Mac LC630. It was the first. I had the Atari 400 and the 800s back, but those didn't count. They were just for playing games on. But the first computer I bought to kind of build the electric playground on and work on was uh, a Mac. And I, of course, I bought some games. I bought SimCity. 2000 and these were nice. early cd-rom games but the other one i bought was mist and holy yeah. shit did i hate mist it just bored the <laughs> crap out of me i didn't know what the hell was going on i was like completely lost it's like i don't i don't know what you're thinking game designers i don't know what kind of weird words you're pushing together to solve these puzzles i don't know the key is in the book yeah, so how was good. i supposed to know that <laughs> yeah. and i, I didn't know what it. book there's yeah. three thousand books in this library i gotta pull the right one it's got a key in it and so i i think that was like my first real experience with uh you know it's a little bit more than a, t- a point and click adventure because you do have some immersion in there but yeah, it wasn't for me, and I, I just pulled it uh, pulled away, and I I think I got so angry I snapped that CD-ROM in half at one point. It's like, <laughs> yeah, inject, 
<laughs> I'll never word. play you again. Goodbye, yeah. Mist. Which made Into it uncomfortable. Into the mist with you. Into when the we, mist. We would interview people that were working on sequels to Mist <laughs> in a, in EP, but you know, I, I I probably opted to not uh, tell that story then. But <laughs> it wasn't wasn't my, my favorite. first. The first copy of the game I had broke. I don't know what happened to it. It <laughs> yeah. snapped on my Sim City. On the other hand, which you didn't play blew my freaking mind and it gave me a real appreciation for the minutia of what city engineers have to deal with you know oh, I played, the first city i played was on the super nintendo that was cool too yeah i had that yeah. one as well yes all right uh let's uh that was a weird tangent but we had it <laughs> and, and you're welcome i'm to still it. waiting for that indie stream I'll be, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be tuned in oh that'll happen one day uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, let us uh, let's move on now a little bit to the uh, Tribeca Games Festival, and Harold Halibut was one of them. They had about eight games on on uh, on show, um, and I wanted to uh, take a look at one of them here called Lost in Random, which um, I believe EA is actually bringing out to the world. This is a uh, you know another one of these games that looks like it. I, it's made with um cg animation it's not made with puppets as far as i know i could be wrong but it looks like little puppets it looks very hand built very hand designed incredibly elaborate creature designs and character designs um a little bit like a uh, tim burton kind of vibe to the animation and the art and the character designs it's like uh it's it's like a tim burton stop motion nightmare before christmas cg game you know, yeah. like just looks so freaking like that, like cool. a like a little nightmares look to it. Yeah, yes, yeah. a little nightmares. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I love that franchise. Those games are great. Um, terrifying. So, it's, yeah, totally terrifying. <laughs> and I think there there is some some scares to be had in this game with some creepy looking characters and and uh, uh, designs. But there's also like a fantasy book kind of vibe to it. And I just loved, uh, uh, you know, the showcase. I loved. Honestly, I love seeing developers all the way through the last couple of days. We've had a lot of, you know, visits into studios, a lot of behind the scenes. They stuff. can't go anywhere, Vic. Which is great, though, <laughs> man. I think that that's awesome. I mean, one of the things that I appreciated about the Summer Game Fest kickoff thing is that Jeff had, uh, uh, you know, game makers up on stage that were just announcing that they were working on something. You know, the yeah. the uh, the guys that are working with PlayStation, X Treyarch, dudes. Deviation. Yeah, Deviation. Uh, I thought that was great. And and so we got a nice little sense of that here with Lost in Random. A little taste of what the game is going to be with with really elaborate ideas on, on the character designs and stuff. But I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, and again, it's one of these EA, um, just like they did with It Takes Two, they're kind of finding something uh, unique and special. And honestly, when I was thinking of It Takes Two, because I think they showed this trailer and It Takes Two at E3, in 2019 or Maybe. one of the last big and i i got them confused with each other but this looks very <laughs> different this looks like um there's elements some fantastical elements that look a little similar but this is a this is a different type of experience so yeah. that one is called uh lost in random we already talked a little bit about the um uh halibut game harold halibut um Harry house yeah and then there's this 12 minutes game which was introduced by uh james mcavoy and um, uh, Ray okay. is in the in the uh, game as well. What's her name again? Oh, Daisy uh, Ridley. Daisy Ridley. Yeah. So they had a little. Uh, you know, Tribeca's got access to all kinds of super famous people, and this game is actually voiced by McAvoy and uh, Daisy Ridley, and I think Willem Dafoe was in this one as well. It's kind of Willem. Like Willem. A, a little murder mystery. Um, you know, slice of life with these characters. Very character driven. It's only Lots 12 minutes dialogue. long. <laughs> it's a 12 minute experience. Yeah. And I, I think what they're trying to express with the game is how much can happen within 12, 12 minutes. And there's also a, like a Groundhog Day kind of reoccurrence kind of deal to it as well. And, it, you know, very interesting camera choice, this overhead perspective looking yeah. down on these people. With, it's with like old school building. Legend of Zelda, man. Top down. And <laughs> let's go. Old, old school or <laughs> Zelda, but it's real life. <laughs> yeah. The mundane, like mundanities. What's the word? Mundanities. Mundanities. Mondays. Somebody's got case of the Mondays. The, yeah, the, the 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 yeah the Mondays of uh, of reality. <laughs> uh, yeah, hopefully this twelve minutes game. I mean, there's a, clearly a tremendous amount of um, expectation if it's one of the games that is profiled at at uh, Tribeca. But the actors that are involved and the 
uh, the spotlights on this game are sort of, I think, probably turning the crank under pressure. It's got to deliver. It's got to be super cool. Another game that they showed off is a game called Sig uh, Signalis or Signalis. Signalis. And Signalis. Uh, this looks amazing. Signalis. This is a pixel um, mystery type of experience. Maybe. I thought it was Ghost in the Shell. It has a you know Blade Runner Ghost in the Shell kind of thing to it, but it looks fantastic. This looks really cool. Uh, it, it's got survival horror type elements into it, it built into it, um, with great you know pixel anime characters and cut sequences. This looks phenomenal. I don't know. Sadly, when... it's a point and click adventure. I, <laughs> so I think there's yeah. some shooting. <laughs> looks like there's some action. I bet you there is a lot of point and click about this game, but it looks great. Maybe a little. Uh, slice of what Snatcher delivered as well. Oh, looks man. dark, looks bleak. Wait, Snatcher, yeah, it's my Sega CD out. Let's go. Yeah, this looks great. Do you have a copy of Snatcher? Yeah, I'm impressed. That's awesome. Signalis is called, it is called, and I don't know when it's coming. Uh, we just got a nice little taste of it, and it looks absolutely phenomenal. We've got a lot of uh, Sable, we got Sable at the, at the Summer Game Fest. And we also saw it at the uh, Tribeca Games Festival as well. This is another anime-influenced uh, adventure experience, action adventure experience, but it's m much more, um, I think, introspective and character-based and, and relationship-oriented. It's not quite as lonely, I think, as uh, The Legend of Zelda. I think this is about uh, you know thriving in your community and understanding your place and there's, uh, I think, a, a, a great deal of emphasis put on um, your existence in this world and your coexistence in this world. It's, it's a very contemplative kind of idea uh, with trappings that we see in lots of cool games out there. But it looks amazing, right? Yeah. I mean, again, it's, it's, I love all of the variety of how games look again. Yeah. You know, it seemed like for such a long time, like this game looks just like that game we saw two games ago. Totally. This game, this game looks like that. Yeah. So much of just like pop and pizzazz and just like, what are they, what are they doing with this? Yes. Okay. Take these risks. You're, let's, you're, let's make your game stand out. Have it give it, you know, like, did you see that game that looked like that one game? Like, which game? They're like, oh, that one that looked like all of them. No, that didn't happen this time. We didn't get a lot of that. Well, and I didn't, I didn't pull them. I mean, there were games that were looked incredibly generic, and I didn't pull those games. We're not talking about any of those types of titles because yeah. they're, they're instantly forgettable, you know? I, and I, I feel like games like Evil Dead and Back for Blood are veering in that territory if they're surrounded by other games that look like that right now, you know? But you're not going to mistake Sable for anything else. <laughs> yeah. It sure looks like Zelda, but in a different yeah. way, you know? It looks that, amazing. Uh, oh, what was that game that was on the PlayStation 3? Was it the Miyazaki game? Uh, oh, yes. I love that game. Yeah. Um, it's got two of them. There was a sequel, White Witch, or no, yes. was it something in the... The Wit, Yes. Yeah, right? What's the, the game? The What's Witch. They'll, they'll tell us in the chat. <laughs> hit me with uh, the, hit me I, the chat. I love it. Yeah, I had never played it because I think you and Ben had reviewed it on the PlayStation 3 and you guys liked it. But Nino Cooney. Nino, yeah, there you Thank go. you, Daniel Corona. Wrath of the White Witch. There yeah, and then they did the remaster of it and I played it on the PS4 with my daughter and I, like we were like, holy crap, this is gorgeous. It's just so beautiful. Um, and the sequel's really great too. Uh, and you know what was kind of fitting with that is this Kenna Bridge of Spirits, which looks very um, tr like kind of modern day Pixar and Disney CG animation kind of esque. You know, this this oh, almost yeah. feels like it's it's like a Pixar short. Yeah, <laughs> right? it, it's gorgeous. But the story behind the making of it, this is the first game from this company, Ember Lab, um, that were inspired by lots of classic games out there. But they they had some experience with animation. It's incredibly ambitious. It looks like triple A. It looks like it's coming from a massive studio with huge pedigree. And I think that's going to put some pressure on this game. But God, it looks absolutely stunning, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It looks like, uh, what was that? I'm going, I just keep going back. It looks like this. What was that launch Xbox 360 game? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Hit me with cameo. Chat. Cameo, yeah. Yes. You're making so me like, think oh. back, man. You're making <laughs> like, I'm warring back in the Rolodex there, trying to remember all these things. But it's like trying to go back to that far to find a game that it looks similar to. And like, okay, all right. Because that's what I thought when I first saw it. I was like, oh my God, is this going to be like, are they going to be on cameo? Well, you know what's, what's weird, right? Is, like, is we, we're back in. 
we we think of Rare because Rare made Cameo, and it it feels like if Rare didn't go on this tangent with their Connect stuff, and then like Sea of Thieves and these massive experiences, and had stayed in this single player ad- action adventure c- kind of direction, they yeah. would be making games that look like this. Yeah, you know, I'm um, ready for a new Viva Pinata, guys. Let's go. Yeah, but I mean, even that, I think that was the opening of Rare saying, hey, we can make anything. And now they make games that are everything, you know, yeah. like Everwild is probably going to blow our freaking minds with its ambition. And Sea of Thieves has turned out to be this, uh, y- you know, persistent community that just keeps growing and growing. But yeah, I I know like me, you missed the days of games like this that Rare used to be an expert at, you know, yeah. and now they have the tools as any developer does to make stuff that looks like a freaking movie. I mean, look at this thing. I cannot believe that this is made by a first time studio. It looks yeah, absolutely stunning. It looks insane. And the fact that Tribeca pulled this group and this game, cause it, you know, it's being, I think it's, it, it's so is Sony publishing it or it, it's, is it exclusive mm. to PlayStation? I'm not exactly sure. It might yeah, be like a know. timed exclusive, but the, you know, the fact that Tribeca who, it, you know, they're clearly actively trying to find the smaller but ambitious stories out there. Said, so, yeah, we're going to put in this uh, can of Bridge of Spirits into the lineup. That I mean, that totally stands out from all the other things that we just saw. Yeah. But, you know, also not any, like the, the other ones are not any less ambitious. They're just very indie right. looking compared yeah. to Kenna. Right? It's just it's the difference. It's the you know the differences. That's a good thing. You don't want to have a, a show that just has seven of the same games that right. are like they're all shooters. Uh, there's battle royale and uh, it's, there's going to be some transactions in there that are going to give you different skins with kites yeah. to fly. Cool. I mean, pretty incredible. That that was sort of the the run of all of the different titles. It took us an hour, a literal hour, just to get through <laughs> most of those games. And there were lots of others that I didn't get into. That's day one, basically. <laughs> it's, it's like day minus one. <laughs> and and I, I just got a bunch of emails and I had to sign some NDAs and stuff like that for stuff that's about to drop over the weekend. I've, I've, uh, I've seen us, some secret stuff that I can't secrets. talk about yet. Tell us secrets, Victor. This This is going to be a freaking amazing E3. Like, I think there's going to be some really, really cool shit that we're going to see over the next couple of days. I, I, I wanted to... Um, uh, talk quickly though about what Netflix has been showing off. They revealed oh, something yeah. really crazy today, and that Cuphead. is this new, yeah, this new Cuphead <laughs> TV show, this animated show. Wayne Brady is going to be uh, uh, playing this guy. I don't remember what the character's name is, Mr. Dice or something Mr. like Dice. that. Is it Mr. Dice? Yeah. Okay. Well, there it is. Okay. Uh, but look at this design. Yeah. It just looks insane. It looks just like the the game for sure, which is based on all kinds of classic '30s animated, uh, you know, work. Um, it just looks stunning. And hopefully the uh, uh, the music and the um, I, hopefully it's got that sort of crackle and that that uh, scratch yeah. that the old that old record. Stuff has. Yeah. That re- the vinyl soundtrack. It looks fantastic. So and we know we got a little kind of tiny taste of uh, Witcher 2, which is across their social media right now. Not really enough to kind of show off. But the other thing that they showed off, which isn't really game related, but I know uh, on my, uh, you know, in some of my friends list, people are completely freaking out about the Masters of the Universe animated show that Kevin Smith is working Mark on. Ha- have you seen Mark the visuals Hamill. for this? <laughs> Mark. Hamill. And Mark yes. Hamill is Skeletor, yes. yes. Skeletor. Yeah. Yes. It looks great. It does yeah. look great. And he, I, you dude, know. always going to be a special place in my heart for He-Man. Yeah? Yeah, I just, you know, that was one of, like, my show was going to have all the toys and the resurgence. <laughs> and it was just like, oh, but now I got Mark Hamill. Yeah. It just what is going to be Skeletor? It's Come on rad. now. It's Come on rad. now. Let's go. Let's just start it right now. Did I miss Mark. anything? Was there something that, that you saw that we didn't talk about? One thing that bamboozled me yeah. was um, the director's cut. Oh, yeah. I didn't even of bother Death putting Stranded. that. That was ridiculous. I, I love who seeing... Di- who directed the original? I saw your I tweet on, IMD- on that. <laughs> I, looked, I looked on IMDb, and it turns out Hideo Kojima was the director of Death Stranding. <laughs> and what's his studio called? What's Where, where does he work again? Um, I don't know, Kojima Studios, right? Yeah, Kojima Productions, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, it's and, yeah. And and so, do you think uh, Hideo think Kojima had to go and, and directed speak, it? 
Yeah, did he have to go and speak to the to the guy that runs Kojima Productions to ask if he could put the director's cut in? Yeah, um, I so, I would hope he did. I hope he so got. So he looked in the mirror and he said, "It is time." He was to like, release. "Hey, you, Hideo <laughs> Kojima, how would you like to do a director's cut of the game you directed?" Uh, yeah, crazy. Uh, Sam, I am one 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 says uh, new painkiller. We didn't talk about that. I know that there was some oh, yeah. stuff, some stuff dropping from uh, Coach Media or Koch Media. Koch Media. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, and prime, uh, whatever there was, uh, there was something called Skies. I I, I forget the name of it. Um, I'll, I'll wrap up more of that stuff maybe on Monday and there's more things to talk about and stuff, but, uh, that was all kind of dropping as I was putting this show together. Yeah. Uh, but God, man, what a, what a beginning, right? Like what, this is pretty freaking fantastic to start it's, this, this, this week is like off when you go, when you'd go to E3 and then there would just be like a plethora of announcements before you even get to like the press conferences and you're just like, what? I'm so excited for all these things. How much more can there be a yeah. whole weekend? And then some, yes, we got many more days of announcements and excitement and awesome things being shown hopefully surprises again that's what when you were talking about what are you most excited about for e3 these Stuff games that know. i wasn't expecting yes these Agreed. beautiful experience looking or these beautiful looking experiences that i hope to get to play when they come out and hopefully they all come out when they're supposed to come out and no more delays let's get the world back on track and make games again make games better again yeah yeah it's going to be interesting to see how the studios deal with post-covid and whether there's going to be a uh, work from home contingent and it's just going to play a, a part in the way that all this stuff gets made i suspect it will be matthew nugent marcou just sent out a super chat thank you so much kenna bridge super of spirits chat. is a ps and epic store exclusive oh the, mm. thank you so much for doing a little live research for us me in miru uh yoku seven adrian yoku love seven. you that's very nice you guys are amazing thank you very much for that um i yeah i think we we have uh, we've gone off to an auspicious beginning, an opening, uh, you know, kind of just barrage of lots of interesting stuff to talk about. But kudos to all of the indie game makers out there, you know, the the young teams and uh, the companies that have been doing this for a little while, but they're really kind of getting the spotlight right now. It was really, you know, fantastic to see. And I think Jeff did an awesome job with pulling as he does. As he does, yeah, we're we're kind of coming to sort of just see that in everything that he does now, but still never easy. But he did a great job, not just in making a show, but in pulling a nice, diverse assortment of titles. And what I thought was cool is we had free to play stuff, which I'm not a crazy huge fan of, uh, but I respect how much they are an incredibly integral component of the video game industry. And there are huge fans for that, you know. Like, there's a uh, League of Legends show that's going to be dropping on on it's be uh, Netflix, bananas. and I'm sure that's going to be super popular. Uh, but Man I don't know gosh, any of the characters. I never played like League of Legends, so I don't know that world. Uh, I got into it, was... it for like a month, and then I realized I'm not in it for this game. Yeah, I'm not good. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Yeah, you, you it's so competitive, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. When the community is yelling at you for whatever thing, like side thing you're picking for your character, what are you doing picking that? I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play anymore. Delete from computer. <laughs> Delete. <laughs> Great. When a game makes you cry, that was... See, there that was sometimes crazy. I was getting yelled at. <laughs> but you know what? I was I was really happy to see that, that, uh, that collection, you know? And that... I think there's that mutual respect across the spectrum. There was no... Even the... the um, uh, I, for, I, I, I keep wanting to call them the deviant company what's the what's the deviation? name of the company deviation even yeah. when dv i keep now i've got deviant in my mind they're always going to be deviant games for me but deviation when the deviation took the stage there was no like ego tripping they there was a humbleness they were nervous to be out on stage and i love the humanity of that but there you know the idea that playstation is investing millions of dollars into their business and they were proud to talk about they have a long roadway and they're going to be making all kinds of stuff they were right next to people that were that maybe one or two or three people building a game and they're cranking on it. And I love that Jeff can find that stuff and isolate it. And our industry is, uh, is pretty good at sharing the stage like that, you know? Yeah. It's really that's good. Why it's, that's why it's such a fun industry. It really is. Everybody the just wants to help. Everybody. I think they pulled off a great show too. 
everybody Tim, in the Tim and that crew does as they do. Yeah. But everybody in their backyards and stuff, it was very humble. And did you, did you see John drop that, that lone singular F bomb in, in the middle of the, <laughs> <laughs> what the, it was JG. Awesome. Every, everybody's got it super polite all the way. And he's, I don't even want to say it again, but it was awesome. Uh, but that was good. That was super good. And uh, I'll be streaming again over the weekend. I, I wish I could figure out how to, um, if I do figure out how to have two of us on screen and stream at the same time. I've done it before, but I can't get my stuff to talk to each other nicely. Um, I suspect you're going to be watching everything, you just, right? You just got to click the thing and do the thing. It's not as easy as that. I've got to go in through a switcher. I stream off of a Mac. Nah, so it's, can't, can't you just like, so you just have one screen open and then you just uh, have your one thing record that screen? I don't know. See, I have you on a computer over here patched oh, into my my game um, capture device into my computer. And then you're this on this screen, too. So I, I, I don't have it efficiently set up, but I had it working before, and I don't know why I can't do it again. But if I do get it working again, um, I'm going to reach out to you so we can watch one of these things together. Yeah. Let's Does that sound good? Because I know you're going gonna to be, be watching it anyways. Yeah. And yeah. When I, once I finish... Uh... Ratchet. Once I finish that ratchet and click, shout out to the man, the myth, the Malenka. Uh, it's dude. Yes. I'm like nine hours. And I started playing nine o'clock last night and then it was three in the morning. And I was like, I need to go to sleep. It's so very good. So I can wake up and play some more. Yeah. It is an incredibly addictive. Do you stream? Do you stream that? Like yeah. exclusively? I stream every, every game I play, I stream. You're just I streaming. I don't, I don't really play games offline anymore. That's amazing. I figure if I'm going to play it, might as well share it with the people. Do you, Are you able to pay attention to the uh stories are you because yeah. you're t you're chatting the whole time yeah but it's mostly just i mean i talk to myself anyway okay all right mostly just like that's one thing I, I always find like i get off in a tangent and, I, and it's like what do i do what, what and then i have <laughs> that, to ask the chat happened. to help me yeah. like what you am i reload. supposed to do? <laughs> you just reload your save real quick <laughs> i mean that's that's also part of the joy because it, it feels like you're not alone when you're doing this stuff uh, but yeah, I'll be streaming this weekend. Um, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but there's something tomorrow. The Ubisoft thing tomorrow, I will be streaming that. I will be streaming the Xbox thing on Sunday. Uh, yeah. I may have guests, um, but uh, yeah, there will be lots more content. And uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be a lot of really nice surprises. Game Vigia industry games! has been busy. Vigia Games! Yes, Vigia Games. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Always great to have Jose with us. You can follow him on Twitter at Don Fubar. You can uh, follow him on Twitch and watch his streams at, uh, is it Don Fubar as well on Twitch? Don underscore Fubar. Thank you. Don underscore Fubar right, on keep Twitch. Keep your mic at the ready, Vic. We're going to be talking about games all weekend long. And studio visits are coming back. Studio visits are finally coming back. And I, and I can't wait to, to uh, hang with you in the Bay Area and maybe in L.A. In the future, I can I can see into the future and things are going to get better. I can see myself on an airplane. That would be amazing. Can't, I miss it. Yes. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and watching. And uh, have yourselves a fantastic weekend. We will see you here very soon. And until then, play forever. Play.